So a funny thing happened uh, a couple weeks ago. A uh, graduate student walked in my office, sat down, and looked me in the eye, and she said, I want to work on missiles. I want to work on missiles. Now, this is the sort of thing that, I mean, it's hard to say precisely what's wrong with that statement, right? (laughs) But you know there's something wrong. I mean, it's more than that. There's something wrong with the whole situation there. And I guess, you know, I'm not naive. I mean, I'm I'm an engineer. I live in the United States. Uh, My country spends as much on military defense as the entire rest of the world, right? That money has to go somewhere. It goes to a lot of good people, right? But not me, right? I mean, I don't do that sort of work, do I? Why did she think that I was the perfect one to advise that thesis topic? I mean, it makes you think. And it made me think about, you know, how did I get here? Why am I doing what am I, why I'm doing what I'm doing? Not even so much about, you know, what are the applications to which uh, the work that I do are going to be, um, you know, what, what applications are they going to enable? I mean, that, that's not even so much it, but what ideas uh, does my work provoke? So I guess, um, you know, thinking about how I got here maybe is not uh, all that hard a question. I mean, so once upon a time, I was three years old, right? Happy, excited. Um, and shortly after this picture was taken, my father brought home a computer. This computer was a Commodore 64, if you can believe that, right? That dates me. Um, and, and so he was, a, he was a high school math teacher. Um, but in his spare time, he liked to code. He liked to program. He liked to create educational software. And um, one of the, uh, I guess, one of the first pieces of software that he created was this game called Algernon. Algernon was a mouse. Uh, Like all mice, Algernon lived in a maze and liked to eat cheese. And the idea here was um, you uh, uh, you were supposed to give Algernon a sequence of commands that would get it from A to B, get it to the cheese, right? So you'd tell it, okay, move forward 10, turn left, turn right, this sort of thing. I mean, I just, I just love this. <laughs> and I guess the, the inspiration behind this, uh, this game was a, was a book, a fairly well-known book, Flowers for Algernon, in which um, there's some kind of a, a medical treatment program, a drug treatment program, something that, that makes, uh, makes people smarter, I guess, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, maybe compensates for some kind of mental disability. And this was given to a person, and this was given to a mouse. And that mouse was Algernon. And I guess, you know, once I, I mean, just started thinking about this stuff, it's, I mean, it, this, this resonates, right? Things like this echo. And you, you, right here, you have, I mean, Algernon is, I mean, nothing more in this context than a robot. And the inspiration for this game is nothing more than, you know, some, some neuroscience. I, that's what I do now. These things echo, they echo. The technology uh, echoes over many, many years. I mean, now, uh, 20 years later, this was my Algernon, right? So this is, uh, this is a, a real, this is a real robot. This was a robot that was built by um, the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory that I was lucky enough to work with as a graduate student. And this robot climbs things. It's about half my size. Uh, it's built to go from bottom to top of something, a cliff, a climbing wall, whatever. It's supposed to do that sort of the way that, that we, would, we would do that. And, uh, you know, here the idea is not, um, you don't give this robot a sequence of commands like you give Algernon a sequence of commands. You give it an algorithm. You give it a planning algorithm. You, you give it the ability to reason about how to get from one place to another, right? And that's, that just that became my, my passion. Now, the motivation for this... Um, uh, was, uh, I mean, great. I mean, it was really simple, really great. Um, this is Mars. This is a crater on Mars. Um, we want to know whether or not there was ever life on Mars. Uh, where's the best place to look? It's the sides of cliffs, just like you would here on Earth. 
And um, the problem is that uh, you certainly you, you can't drive to the side of up the side of a cliff. You can't fly. That is fairly hard on Mars uh, because of the atmosphere. So you either go up or down, and, and we we went up. Right? This is this was just a wonderful thing to have as uh, as a motivation. Um, but I guess it, you know it was it was more than that. This was just an incredibly exciting project, and it led to new things. So this in particular, this is now a, a huge robot um, that I that I worked with very briefly before I left. Um, this is uh, 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 taller than me. It's two tons. This is a robot that was built to go to the moon. Right? It has wheels, uh, so it can drive around, but it can put brakes on these wheels and you know walk. And uh, the idea was to send up a dozen of these. Um, stacked on top of each other, put them in a rocket, uh, send them to the moon, and they carry astronauts around, right? build a, a lunar base, this sort of thing. I mean, it's, it, this, is, this, is, this is incredible stuff, right? This is what my little three-year-old uh, uh, mind uh, was, was dreaming about doing. Um, and, I, and I guess the, I, I mean, the other, the other thing that I find exciting about this sort of work is that, it, you know, trying to, uh, trying to figure out how to tell robots how to do these sorts of things can often give you insight into how people do these sorts of things. This dovetailed nicely with an interest of mine at the time out in, in, in California. Um, and it, you know, it led me to think, it, it really led me in the direction of neuroscience, right? How do, how do people think about these sorts of tasks? Um, uh, you know, how, do, how, do we, how do we explain their, their processes of, of reasoning, right? And, and now, you know, we've, we've taken this farther in, in my research group. I mean, we don't just, um, you know, try to explain how people do things, but we try to even connect, we, we try to make these direct connections between, create interfaces between, you know, a person's mind and some kind of prosthetic device, right? So in particular, um, I mean, you can walk over to the Beckman Institute and, and uh, go into my lab and put a, an EEG cap on your head, an electroencephalograph. Um, this thing is measuring brain activity. The brain activity, it, you can think of it as, as providing correlates of I'm thinking about going left or right, this sort of thing. And you can use that as an input signal to fly for real a remotely teleoperated aircraft you know, over the farms uh, south of here, right? I mean, this is incredible stuff, right? This isn't something that would have been possible 10 or 20 years ago. And I mean, this is an amazing time to be working in this area as an engineer. You just, you know, 20 years from now, you have no idea what might be possible with this sort of thing, right? Yeah, you know, in the back of my mind, right, I've got medical devices, prosthetic limbs, you know, things, you know, trying to, I mean, I'm, you know, it's, it's helping people, right? It's helping people, right? Right? <laughs> you know. I mean, if you stop to think about this, okay, so I do really big legged robots. Right? Where does the money come from for that? I mean, <laughs> most of it ain't coming from NASA, I'll tell you that much, right? Um, you build big legged robots to carry around, uh, you know, guns and weapons and ammunition and gear and all of these things, right? Um, remotely teleoperated aircraft. Uh, you know, the polite term is surveillance, and then it sort of, you know, goes downhill from there, right? I mean, these are, you know, not necessarily, I mean, you can think what you want about that, but these are realities. I can, I can say all I want about search and rescue and medical applications and these sorts of things. I mean, that's what these sorts of robots evoke. Now, I get this uh, comment a lot, and I just got this the other day from a colleague. I'm just an engineer. Leave that to the policy folks. Right? That is such nonsense, that statement. And I think, I mean, it completely misses the point that technology, technology is what's driving policy. It's more than, I mean, technology shapes development. It shapes imagination, right? Now, I, I mean, I, you know, there's a lot of things you, you, how do you correct this? There's a lot of things you might say that, that's wrong with this. I think maybe one thing that's, that's wrong with this is that we've lost as a research community, maybe, some of us, a sense of what it means to be a professional, 
What does it mean to be professional? One of the key things, one of the key differences is that that's not true, right? There's needs and there's wants. The needs are legitimate, the wants almost never are, right? And what we should be doing is figuring out what our clients, I mean, as a researcher, what does my funder actually need? And my technology, am, am, I, am I satisfying that need? Is it really keeping people safe? Or is it satisfying a want that I just choose not to think about, right? What can I do? I, can t I mean, imagine if we all took one hour to sit with that student and figure out where they were coming from. One day to attend a city council meeting, engage with the community, you know, find applications uh, you know, around, you know, that are just surrounding you. Imagine if we took one week with a program manager to figure out what it is, you know, ask why, what it is they really, they really need. Now, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, there's a good reason why I care about all this, right? Um, so my, my daughter just had her three-year-old birthday. Uh, uh, she turned three last week. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I mean, I'm not scared of, of terrorists, right? I'm scared that in 20 years, she walks into somebody's office and says the exact same thing that my graduate student did, 